all right, this should be pretty fun. So I think about like a new series, right? I need kind of consistency in my content of like, hey, things to talk about um, because I'm off the cuff a lot, right? I just like reacting to things. And so whenever I have a lot of stuff to react to, I can create lots and lots of content. Um, so I'm like, hey, let me come some series. That's why I do the fire or fail series where I react to TikTok ads because that's easy for me to do. I can pull up TikTok ads. I can look at TikTok ads all day, Facebook ads all day and break down why they're great, why they're bad and do that all the time. So what I want to start doing is something that also kind of intrigues me and also bothers me. And I like things that bother me, piss me off because I have fun talking about things that piss me off. And one of those things is uh, kind of common wisdom, business, marketing advice being shared on social media, right? So obviously you're watching this on YouTube. So you likely spend lots of time on social media consuming content. And if you're watching my content, you likely follow a lot of other people that share business advice, that share investing advice, that share marketing advice, right? And there's a lot of great stuff out there. There are so many of my friends that share amazing, amazing content that actually works, um, that's actually valuable. But the reality is there is a an awful lot of content out there that is pure trash, that is pure garbage, that is people sharing stuff they saw from somebody else, that they heard from somebody else, that they're regurgitating to their audience and they never actually practice it. You'd be shocked, right? You'd be really, really shocked. As I've gotten more successful over the last decade and I've gotten to get in the, the room with all the top people, right? I've gotten to be in the same room, same small room, spend time with, masterminding with, speaking on stages with, all the biggest names. And most of those big names that I'm now great friends with are the real deal, right? Like they actually are brilliant. They're geniuses. They're practicing what they preach. There is a lot of people that have kind of come in and out that I've met over the years that like that came, they got really, really big for a year or two. And then I met them and like now they're doing nothing. There's a lot more of those people. And those people don't know what they're talking about. Like if you actually get into a deep, intelligent conversation with a lot of these individuals and you actually start poking and poking and asking questions and prodding for more information, they're, they're full of crap right? They have no idea what they're talking about, right? They just kind of get on social media, turn their iPhone on. They spout a bunch of garbage for 60 seconds, share it. And because nobody presses them on it, it sounds impressive, right? It's got fancy editing. It looks legit. They're in front of their nice house, nice car. So it's got to be legit, right? But the reality is, so there's a lot of bad information on social media. And the reason I wanted to create this series and start doing this, maybe I'll start doing it. By the way, if you guys actually like this series, once you're done with it, make sure to hit the subscribe button and let me know in the comments below if you actually like this, uh, this series and I'll do more of them, right? So um, I wanted to do more of this because I care about you, right? I'm at a point in my career now where money still drives me. I still want to make a lot more money, right? I still like things and I want to keep continuing to set my, my wife, my kid and his kid up for life, right? And generations, that's still a goal of mine. But a more important goal at this point is impact, right? I really, really love teaching. I love speaking. I love educating. I like creating content, right? That's why I do this. It's because I want to help as many people as possible. And so if I can see bad information out there, and share my genuine perspective of why I think that's bad and why I think that's actually not true, I can help a lot of people. Um, and so that's my goal with the series is to take information that I see on Instagram, on YouTube, on TikTok, that is just uh, either blatantly false and totally not true, or this is what happens a lot. It may be true for some people, but it's not true for a lot of people. And those other people over here that's not true for think that they need to fit into this mold to be successful. So they try to fit into this mold and try to do these things and it doesn't work for them, right? Remember, growing a business, being successful is not a one size fits all thing. I tell people this all the time when it comes to marketing, right? People think all the time there is some type of secret sauce, some secret formula that like all the big experts, right? All of our big guys, you know, Nick Shackelford and Tim Bird and I and Ezra Fireson and Molly Pittman and all these people that are the experts, right? In the marketing world, we all get together in a room, Russell Brunson, Ryan Dice, right? Perry Belcher, like all these people get into a room and we all sit down and we all share the secrets of the universe that, hey, this is the funnel and the email script and the Facebook ad that if you do this, this, and this, you make millions. You make millions and millions and millions of dollars, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars. The reality is there is a reason why, um, and I promise we will actually get to the point of this video, which is today's first myth, and it's a good one. Um, so make sure you stay tuned. But this is important as well. So um, what you realize though is that if you go and you talk to me, or you go talk to Tim, or you go talk to Nick, or you go talk to any of these individuals, and you sit down with them for a week, or even just an hour, and you see what they do, how they buy media, how they how they approach marketing. We all have similarities, right? There's all foundational stuff that we do and understand, but our processes are different. The way we go about doing it and implementing it is different, right? Our ideas and strategies are different. 
but somehow we've all been able to uh, achieve success, right? To different degrees. We've all achieved lots of success. So you need to realize it's the same thing in every aspect, right? The way that Elon Musk has built his business is different than the way Tim Cook has built his business. It's different than the way that Mark Zuckerberg has built his business, that Sarah Blakely's built her business, that Oprah Winfrey's built her empire. Like everyone has some similarities, but the way they get to where they're going is very different, radically different in some cases. So you need to remember that we are all individuals. We are all different, right? We aren't all just cut from the same exact clone where we all just the way we operate, the way we live, the way we work, the way we socialize, the way we think, it's not the same. So we shouldn't have the same strategies, the same tactics, right? Because it might not work for us. So that's the point of today's um, kind of what I call BS. And I'm still thinking about the name, what I'm going to call this series. If you guys got any good ideas, let me know. Because whatever the title is in this YouTube video probably will not be the permanent title. So just like the uh, kind of fire or fail series started out with something totally different. But um, but the myth that, that I see a lot is that you have to wake up like Tim Cook at 3.45 a.m. every single day. And if you don't wake up at 3.45 or 4.30 or 5 or whatever that early, early hour is, that you aren't a true CEO, that you can't be successful, that all the best CEOs in the world wake up super, super early before the sun comes up, and that that's their secret to success, that they have all this extra time in the morning to think and brainstorm and go to the gym and do all these things before anybody else is up. And because of that extra time, they're so much more efficient. They're so much more you know, creative. They can think abstractly. They can solve big problems. And listen, there is some underlying merit to that of having uninterrupted time, right? Of having time where you're not being interrupted by anybody. Um, but the point is like, you can make that time at any point throughout the day, right? That's about how you make your schedule. So what I've realized is I'm not a morning person and most people aren't morning people. And in fact, what ends up happening is a lot of people I know think they need to get up at four or five because they hear this from everybody that you need to wake up early, but they're not morning people. They're, they're, they're just not made for it. Their genome is different, right? Their, their biology is different, right? There are certain people that are morning people, certain people that can go on less sleep. Most people can't. And so they end up starting their days really groggy. They're not sharp. And, and because they're not waking up rested, they're kind of sloppy throughout their day. They're making mistakes. They're not thinking as good and, and they're not rested. And their whole day gets thrown off because they're forcing themselves to do something that their body's really not um, allowing them or wanting them to do. So for me, it's like, hey, I could try and force myself to get up early or I could just recognize the fact that I'm not a morning person. I'm never going to be a morning person. And instead, I'm a night person. For me, I think best, I operate best late at night. That is my thing. It's once people go to, once, you know, everyone goes to bed, it's quiet, same type of benefit, right? So early morning of the benefit, of nobody, nobody being up. If you're a night worker, you're the same benefit, right? It's like, Hey, everyone's asleep. So it's quiet. There's no calls. There's no Slack messages, totally uninterrupted time where I can get stuff done. And that's what works for me. And that might not work for other people, right? But What's most important is to find what works for you. What is that time of day where you're just, you have the most energy, where you're the most efficient, recognize what that time is, and then make sure that once you figure out what that time is for you, that you are maximizing that productivity period, right? So if it's a three, four hour stretch where you know you are really productive, where your energy is at the highest potential, that you aren't scheduling calls then, that you aren't on Slack or email or social media then, that you're actually saying, hey, here's what I need to get done today. I need to shoot this video. I need to write this article. I need to build this funnel. I need to do X, Y, and Z. And that is when you are laser focused, dialed in during that kind of peak productivity. So you're knocking stuff out. I've always said, and I still really, really believe this, total hours worked in a day as a boss, somebody that hires people and, and manages employees, doesn't really matter to me. I know for a lot of companies, they have you know nine to five. You got that's when you got to be here, eight to five, nine to six, whatever it is. Like that's their hours, and you got to be working during that entire block of time. I care about productivity. I care about output. Right? How efficient is your time? I would much rather have employees that can put in four or five hours of hyper efficient, super productive work and actually get their stuff done every day and they actually execute and execute and execute. Then have people that come into the office that that check in at eight or nine, check out at five or six and are barely getting stuff done. And there's a, most employees are that way because the reality is that most of us just aren't very productive. Right? The reality is that um, we get interrupted very, very easily. So the average worker 
and even the average entrepreneur, the average market, whoever's watching this video, it's just most of you, this is what happens. I'm not saying it to fault you. It's, it's, a, it's human. I, I deal with this as well. You need to get in the zone to be maximum product, maximally productive. To get in the zone, you need to really be laser focused working on something for a solid period of time. I'm talking like an hour or so, right? To really get into that flow state. Now, some people can get earlier. Some people takes longer. You can take supplements, things like that. But to get into a flow state where you're really just, you're pumping out work, you're in the zone, right? We all have gotten to that state, that flow state. That's what they call it. The problem though is that as soon as you get a text or a Slack message or a phone call or email, you are out of that state instantly and it takes you the same amount of time to get back into it. So you've just lost another huge chunk of time because you checked that one message, because you answered that one phone call. And for most people, they're checking those things constantly throughout the day. So nobody, most people are not getting into flow states ever, right? So they're operating kind of not at their peak productivity or efficiency every single day. So this goes back to the whole point of the video, which is what matters when it comes to how effective you are at work and getting stuff done and being productive isn't when you woke up or when you went to bed or anything. What matters is during those hours that you are up and you are working, how efficient, how productive, how laser in are you on what you're doing? That's what really, really matters. And then on top of that, what also matters is, well, what are you doing for your health to, to maximize how kind of good you're working, how productive you are during that time as well, right? So things like working out, eating healthy, supplements, meditation, reading, like these are things that are very, very important. And that's again, why the kind of, I think that myth of waking up early, it isn't so much that it's the waking up early part. It's what I believe is that it's the people who wake up early on average also have really good routines and they do a lot of things like reading, working out, um, meditation, uh, planning their day, they do those things. And those things I think are very important. So it just so happens to be a kind of a, a, a correlation between those two things where people that work, wake up early usually do those things as well. And I don't think it's the waking up early part that actually drives the success. It's the actual, that structure and the, the working out and all that stuff that drives success. So you can accomplish that waking up at eight, at nine, at 10, as long as you still do those things and then block out that time and maximize your productivity, you're, you're going to do great. And again, I know a lot of people who do not wake up early, who are night people, they wake up, you know, some people at 9, 10, 11, some people, and they are very, very successful. They get all their stuff done. They're able to actually spend time with their, you know, because again, if you're, if you're waking up at four or five, you're going to bed early. If you want to get your eight hours of sleep, you're going to bed pretty early. I have a family. I want to spend time with them. I want to do fun things, right? I don't want to go to bed at 8 p.m. or 9 p.m., right? Um, so it's again, trade-offs. It's what's important to you. And kind of just to repeat what I said in the beginning of this video, it's not one size fits all. It's what works for you and recognizing that and then making sure you're doing all the right things to support that. So again, fitness, mental, physical health, those things are important. Having structural organization, having a plan for how you're going to attack the day, having tasks and goals for that day, for that week, for that month, for the quarter, for the year. So you know that what you're doing today is actually driving you towards accomplishing those. Those things are way more important than the hour of the day you wake up on. But I'm always, you know, I always like a good debate. So if you disagree with me, if you think that, hey, you need to wake up at a certain time to be successful, let me know below in the comments. If you agree with me that, hey, time doesn't really matter. It's about what you do with the day. Also, let me know below. And then finally, if you feel like sharing, I would love for some other myths, maybe remember some things that you've heard, some popular sayings, popular concepts that you've heard on social media lately that you maybe disagree with, that you're on the fence with, that you'd like me to kind of watch and share my feedback on and maybe i'll feature it in an upcoming episode hit the subscribe button so you get all my next videos hit the little bell so you don't miss one and i'll see you guys in the next one